Bag fuel, baby. Bag fuel, we back. Of course, as I always say, I got my man over there to the right of me. Nah, you know what I'm saying? We got a special guest today. He he's he's controversial, but he's positive. It's weird. How do you be controversial or positive at the same time? We got D1 in the building today. What's up, y'all? Thank y'all for having me, brother. You heard me? I appreciate y'all. Hey, I'm glad you I'm glad you introduced me like that because uh it's crazy, brother, because common sense ain't controversial. But in this world we live in, having common sense makes you controversial. That's all I got, brother, is a lot of common sense. The stuff I be saying, the stuff we gonna talk about hopefully mm -hmm. today, it's just common sense, dog. I ain't no controversial dude. I walk in here by myself, I'm, you know what I mean? I mean, I mean but when you name names, it becomes controversial. It's right? not controversial. It, that still don't make it controversial, I, I brother. I think it it's do. do. In, in this day and age, do you, I understand where you are coming from. But in this day and age, if we're on this camera and we spitting people's names out mm -hmm. and saying it not in a positive way, it's going to become controversial because the internet takes it and runs with it. There you it. go. Because the internet doesn't want to face reality. That's what it is. Yes. So because of that, it's like, oh, man, this is controversial. But what about when somebody is really in this game to make change and to make a, make a difference? Then at that point, the enemy of being able to make change is being watered down. So it's like, you got to keep it a hundred. If you're trying mm. to change something that's set in stone, and right now, this culture got a lot of ignorance, a lot of death, a lot of destruction, a lot of things that's harmful to our people that's set in stone, and we call it culture. But D1 has always been like that. Even that's the when foundation. you started loving it, it was, it, it was, it, 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 NWA, I, I always bring this up to people. We had I ain't that old. But we yeah. had to throw your guns, but I'm, I'm talking about the basis yeah. going through of, the timeline. The basis of what it was, this is what it is. And then I always bring this to people, right? White people show movies. Movies be the worst illest shit. The, the, the Godfather is one of the most traditional classics, the most killing involved in it and everything. But when this happens, nobody blames creativity when it's white people, but when it's black people, I feel like the creativity gets blamed. Because, brother, when the last time uh, one of the actors in Godfather caught a Rico charge or got murdered in real life? I'll wait. they characters is movies. Exactly. Their characters is movies. In rap, one of the main phrases is, I'm keeping it real. Of I'm course. keeping it 100. Mm -hmm. That dude up there, that's one of my favorite rappers, Jada Kids. Just keep it 100 with me. On that album right there. Mm -hmm. You hear me? So since it's implied that we are keeping it real and keeping it a hundred, that's the issue. We can't compare rap to movies because we're not characters. I mean, I, I got you. No, we're but, listening to uh, but, but, but even with the music, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always based upon their life. You know what I'm saying? It's based upon what they see. It's based upon what they've other seen, seen seen people do, mm. and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna put it on 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 us. We're we're podcasters and we're YouTubers, right? Just cause we do hip hop, motherfuckers be coming at us like we rappers. Yeah. You gotta walk around sometimes with fucking security. Mm. It's problems with motherfuckers. We not doing nothing. Elvis Duran don't gotta go through this. <laughs> And so it's you know, a it's a it's Does Joe a, Rogan gotta go through this? Nah. Uh, you know? If 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 a white dude comes out and starts spitting names and starts doing things and saying things, they're not coming after them. People feel like you know what? Let's it's, think it's about that. Think about that. Hold bro. on, hold on. I'm gonna let you, but Donald Trump is saying names and they treating him like how they treat the rappers, though. Well, do you think so? I mean, is he close enough to what the scrutiny and the level of Intent people have on him. Yes, we yeah. gotta assume that there's death threats met. Yeah, and he's like how D1 said he's giving common sense. He's speaking. People are feeling a way about how he's talking, and he's getting the same treatments that we've gotten. Maybe that's just a play, or maybe he's an anomaly. He might be an anomaly, but I just think it's a fine line with because mm. because because you're talking about influence. And yeah. that's all that I'm I'm, I'm, I'm mm. talking about. You know what I'm saying? And I know like when I was younger. When I watched um, in New Jack City, that had an effect on oh, me. I you see what I'm saying? Like, but the same effect was what Tupac had on me. They both had me wanting to go out and do the same thing. It's movies, it's music. So how do we determine, can it start at the home? What, what about the parents? Yes, that, yes, sir. That are dealing with the kids because mm. I grew up in South Jamaica, Queens. I, I had both of my parents and because they instilled certain values in me, 
my biggest badge of honor is I'm not no drug dealer. I'm not no gangster. I I, I say I went to college. I fucking graduated, I, and and I grew up in the den of thieves. But the but the influence in my house is what kept me on the straight and narrow. Right. So we got to start in the household. Okay. Before I became a rapper, I was a middle school teacher. Mm. So I know firsthand that when your when your home life is crazy and super dysfunctional. You are on a path to destruction automatically, right? But that's where rappers, athletes, influencers, leaders have this superhero-like ability to be able to come along and have an influence on a kid that's headed down the wrong path, but because they just so happen to look up to you or something, you might have helped just nudge them back on the right path to live. That don't mean it's your job, because that's not your kid, you heard me? But that's like a gift, brother. That's a responsibility, man. Like, I could have said, oh, man, I'm a teacher. Like, these kids going through hell at home, so it ain't my job to try to help them. No, that's my job as a teacher is like, let me try to help get you back right because you telling me, you know kids talk a lot when they trust you. You telling me what you're going through at home, and it's crazy what you got going on at the crib right now. So that's my job as an authority figure who has your attention. Same thing as a rapper, bro. I only became a rapper. Like you said, we got that in common. We both went to college, um, two-parent household, you heard me? Like, what that means is we don't have to be in this game right now. You know that, right? Like, you doing this because you want to. Mm -hmm. Could have definitely did something mm -hmm. else. Same thing, brother. I was already doing something else. I was already Mr. Augustine before I became D1, the rapper. I got in this game because I was like, bro, you got so much influence as a rapper that I ain't met another profession in life that has more influence on our people. You he said that. On I said our, that. Yes. I said, you yes, said sir. that? I said but that he said beyond our people. Beyond our people. Culturally, mm -hmm. white, Asians, um, yeah. Hispanic. Yo, I got goosebumps right now yeah, underneath said, this, dog. I said, yeah, I said, I, I, yeah, it's so true. So that made me want to become a rapper. So then mm. it's not what you do, but it's how you choose to do it. Because when you know that being a rapper could give you that much influence, now you got to figure out, as a rapper, what do I want to represent and stand for? Because influence could be positive or negative. Absolutely. Influence could make you want to go merc something, or it could make you want to go graduate. You mm -hmm. hear me? Mm -hmm. So me getting into the game, I'm only in this game to have impact. I just so happen to make income as well, but I know the hierarchy. I put impact over income. But you got a whole industry that glorifies money over morality. The whole game is all about get the bag, get the bag. And what happened is we fell in love with the bag so much that we're like, it don't matter what you got to do to get the bag. Sell dope to your people. You heard me? In the Bronx. Um, kill somebody. Matter of fact, when you get the bag, put a bag on somebody's head. You heard me? If you want to get somebody else hit and knocked off. Like the bag is what everybody is in love with. And my thing is like, if I'm talking to atheists, then that's one thing. But do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? Yes. Well, with that being said, brother, we should never be putting money over morality ever. But but you but what about survival? That's you know you know survival is a big deal, and we be lost. You know what I'm saying? When you got bad stuff going on, think about it. Like you be lost sometimes. You gotta come through the light again. And the influence that we're seeing is because that's what they came from. They came from the neighborhood where. That's what it is. That's their poetry. Mm -hmm. So they don't they don't have any positivity yet, D1. That's all I'm saying. They're searching for the positivity. I just honestly think that a lot of people really don't know. And coming from a two-parent household, I was almost lost. I tried selling drugs because I thought I needed the money. I call, I told niggas when it was time for me to check a fiend, this ain't for me. Okay. I don't want to hurt nobody. I changed my mind. Word. I called my father and said, yo, I'm in the gym right now. I owe this money for these packs, whatever. Mm. Wow. And That's I don't want to do this shit no more. And that, and after that, I was on a straight and narrow. You know what I'm saying? I tried everything. Everybody tried a little, you know, you know, girl tried a little pimping, a little bending. Everybody Every, tried a little good. something to try to make some money. I stuck to throwing parties. You know what I'm saying? Parties was what brought me to the music business. But I was lost. And it wasn't because of the music or the movies, it was purely D1. And I was in college too, it was because of my situation. Mm. And I just couldn't see, and my front two low wasn't developed. D1. There you go. You said the bag, let's not prioritize the bag, but now with inflation ridiculous and there's no leverage of you know, earning potential. 
what is the solution to not let the bag corrupt us? Because no bag means no medicine, no health, no home. Food, Sadly, food. no food. You and then you look like you like helping people. That bag allows you to help your family, help out kids, and we can't even do that. So what's the solution to overcome the bag manipulating us and having this authority over us? The more we educate, the less we incarcerate. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you like that. So when we talk about the bag and everything, brother, education is the key to all this stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Cause by getting educated, number one, you make it to where you understand that you have options in life. So now you say, I'm not finna sell no illegal packs because that's gonna get me locked up. Mm. And even if I do make a bag, that bag is temporary before something bad happens. You know what I mean? That comes with education. Education also gives you options to where you, you start to realize like, dang, I'm networking with people who are gonna be somebody in life. That was one of the main things I loved about college yep. was the people that I got to link with. That's they were now, all positive. They were thinking. Come on, man. They were thinking. I tell everybody that they were all thinking. Surrounding in, in a progressive manner. The dudes that put me on the throwing parties. Thank you. They were they were thinking about your um um. We're gonna throw parties and we're gonna get sponsorship. I'm talking about the night. I was like sponsorship. Nah, bro. We gotta charge at the door. They were thinking on a on on, on a whole different plane. As a teacher, you, you went to H HBCU and you're an educator. Mm -hmm. I, I I've done college. Is college really valuable? Is it gonna last long? The way things are set up where people can learn on YouTube and these extraordinary um, tuitions, the loans, it's not even making sense. Parents are telling kids, just go to community college and you can figure out the rest. Is the future of college about to be wiped out? College is not for everyone. That's true. So we shouldn't lie to everybody and say you gotta go to college to be successful. Agreed. For sure. But, but you it, need knowledge. Yeah, but uh, I don't want a doctor operating on me if he ain't go to college. <laughs> but you know what they don't talk about what college does? Hmm. It teaches you how to live on your own. Mm -hmm. It teaches you how to survive. Yep. It teaches you how to grow. Yeah. It makes you have relationships. You can't get it online. Correct. There you go. Like you get it there. Because you get to assimilate. The problem with the online, what, what Corona did, I feel like it was a whole plot and plan to separate people. Mm. Because now we're separated again. When you go to college, you're together. You are, it ain't no duffing out. It ain't people going. It's people who trying to get money. But it's, yeah. a different, it's a different type of community yeah. that we're all here trying to do something, even the ones that you know not staying. Yeah. They want to soak that up for one or two years Fact. Fact. and take that shit home with you. You cannot, if I tell everybody, go to Morgan State, go to college, and you can't be on campus and simulate with your own people and like minds, and then when you go to black college, you see a lot of black faces. Mm. And they tell you we're not trying to do shit, mm. but we are. Definitely. And it's a bunch of us that you go to Morgan State, it's a small campus, 8,000, 10,000. That's 10,000 black people trying to do something progressive. So we are trying to do some shit. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. So now we got to think about what impact does hip hop have on us as kids versus when we get older. When you're older, you're also to the point to where you can listen to something and you can be like, regardless of... If this song is talking about murdering somebody, I'm not finna go murder nobody though. Yeah. Cause I'm a grown man out here. <laughs> you heard me? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm grown. Uh -huh. But when you a kid and when you still in the hood and when you still hurting and you trying to figure out the bag for the first time in life, how I'm gonna get money, and you constantly listening to this music that's so delicious and, and, and it just, it sounds so good and the beats banging. <laughs> and they constantly glorifying one type of lifestyle and one type of way to deal with uh, conflict. If somebody take your girl, they telling you what to go do. If, if you trying to get money, that's me, and I apologize, no, fellas. That's my bad on that. Mm -hmm. Everybody sitting here consuming this music, but when you are young and you consuming it, you have a greater chance of being like, yo, this, this music I'm listening to, these are kind of becoming my commandments. These are kind of becoming like my, my uh, First Amendment, Second Amendment. Like These are the laws that I kind of like live my life by when I'm younger. You got a better chance of letting music influence your lifestyle when you're young and you don't have a strong household. But with, with the music, right, it's immediacy. You get those reactions, those endorphins, and everything it's telling you to do, it can be immediate. You can get into the drug game fast, get a pack, somebody puts you on. Mm -hmm. We in our man's store right now since 1982. Do you think he can make this store happen within a week? 
Absolutely. Just to get the contractors, to get the paperwork, background checks, everything. We didn't even talk about the merch. How about so, your LLC? There just you to go. Get your company, just to get your. And our get culture set up. is very impatient. We want immediacy. I think we have to teach patience. So we got to teach patience, but we, when we when we say we got to teach patience, the, who is we? The, 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 the older, elders, yes, the older people. Of course. Watch this. Oh, this way it get gangster. <laughs> All right. This way it get gangster. If we got to be the ones to teach patience, right, mm -hmm. then in hip hop, the only brothers I'll be frustrated with is the OGs who not teaching. You heard me? If you are OG and you're not in hip hop, you're expected to be a teacher. We got to teach them patience. We got to teach them respect, accountability. In hip hop, it's like we let these OGs get by to where you got to catch this. Almost 60 years old, almost 50 years old, almost 40 years old, OGs for sure, who are still glorifying the same lifestyle that they were blessed to make it from. And they elevated from that, so they know better now. But when you don't have no accountability, because the culture celebrates that, that's where I'd be like, "Come on, OG, but we gotta just, do, we gotta OG do better." OG didn't slid backward too, because OG broke. Yeah, ah. oh, 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 OG broke. OG not broke. Oh, when, oh, when, OG be broke. When, 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 OGs be broke. Okay, well, and, then, and, and you know, don't no young motherfucker want to listen to somebody broke. And the OGs be home that's a frustrated. Fact. That's a okay. fact. They home frustrated and they mad because the young boys is making all of this money. All right, brother. And they not guiding them and they don't no. want to. Listen. I'm it, just keeping it listen, real. Listen, I'm just keeping it real. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm catching okay. you a drip. When I say people's names, nobody who name I said is broke. I agree with you. They're not broke. So because of that, that's why I'm just like, brothers, we made it. Like, we all successful. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. We need to be celebrating and teaching. Celebrating the fact we made it out the trenches and teaching. But when it's to the point where it's like, dang, you made it and you still kind of like, well, I'm just going to get the people what they want, knowing that they be street niggas, though, for real, D1. You want street niggas to be college professors. D1, D1. these <laughs> niggas be really street niggas, though. They just be talented. <laughs> Yeah, they think of this. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't want them niggas telling me what the fuck to do. <laughs> yeah. Word. I'm gonna keep it a bean. I listen to they you got, before them. Exactly. <laughs> These are street niggas, and they and they and they are there to talk to other street niggas. I see Come on, them. Brother. Yo, I see them with street nigga language. All right. <laughs> they street. These young street niggas. They only listen to these older street niggas, and older street niggas is they know their message and music isn't always gonna be the positive thing. But but I see them one on one. Yo, I got this shit. I got this whole shit set up for all y'all to come off the streets and come and record. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna tell y'all what to do, but at least if I can take y'all off the street, if I can provide studio time for y'all Monday, Wednesday, and Friday then that's how I'm giving back to the community, getting y'all gang bangers off the street, trying to help y'all go and more. You seem like you have a strong foundation of history and you understand history. Historically, we said this with Rod Strickland and Jim Jones. Y'all had Jim up here? Yeah, Jim, Jim was my best friend. Mm -hmm. Man, you supposed to be the one that, that, that tell Jimmy come pull up type, like, cause yeah. that, that need to happen, bro. Uh, of like, course, but, you know that, what I mean? but see, but, I have to know you yes. first. We can't just you know do that saying? so everybody I, can. I build with him. That, that's my man. I, he's one of the ones that I'm saying I see what he does personally. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I know his language. He speaks their language. And if he didn't speak their language, these, these niggas would not be gravitating to them and to him. And I'm telling you, mm -hmm. all these niggas is problems on the street. When yo, we go into the yo, studio, D1. It, if it's 50 of them, all 50 niggas is a problem on the street. Niggas is thankful they in this motherfucking spot trying to create. I promise you. They, they would be outside wreaking havoc, nigga. Yeah. But hip hop yeah. and sports, right, <laughs> did something that we didn't see in this country. It made young 20 year olds multimillionaires fast. So now think about that. Before that, how was a young black man becoming really successful? We don't know truly. Maybe right. you have an understanding. Now, even Esso could talk. He was making three to five hundred thousand early mid twenties, and he's like, "Yo, Han, I lost my mind. I lost my mind." And these guys are getting ten million. You want them to give us game? It, I don't know. I never hit five hundred thousand. Only three. But but I, I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> Hip hop is only fifty years old. Fact. There is no 
real foundation of continuous success. Right. As with the stock market or dudes who have at least 200 years ahead of us. Maybe when hip hop hits 100, we could be like, we saw what D1 did. This was the right path. Mm. Follow this. Mm. Well, we saw what Bill Clinton did or whatever. I'm just throwing names out there. Mm. So I'm just talking from a particular level of grace. But right, right. now, it starts with what you did. Right. I think you're the pioneer. Yes. I thank you. That, that means a lot to me to hear that. Because um, that, all I am is just a black man from New Orleans who's trying to fulfill his God-given mission here on earth. They, go for that, it. That, that's it. Like that's, that's all I'm here to do. And what I see inside of hip-hop is it's the 50th year. So everybody just want to celebrate hip hop because it mm. turned 50, right? There's two types of love, bro. There's affirmative love and there's transformative love, right? Affirmative love is to where all you want to do is positively pour into something to express how much you love it. So that's me being like, hey, brother, your store is amazing, bro. Hey, bro, them kicks, them Adidas, fly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I already knew that already. Yeah, you knew that, right, right, right. <laughs> hey, brother, you so articulate, you know what I mean? Like when you talk, da, da, da. That's affirmative love. All you want to do is be positive and pour into stuff. Transformative love is when you know there's a time for affirming, there's a time to compliment and show love like that, but there's a time to say, hey, we could do better. Hey, D1, you showed up late to the interview. You could do better. Hey, uh, da da da, y'all ain't get me the, the right address for the, for the location. Hey, man, we need to do better next time. Da -da. Mm -hmm. There's a way to still like show love, but to be like, hey, we could do a little better. You know, not saying I'm dissing you, no. but. And that helps us to transform. You know we can't take criticism. You, there you go. I, I'm learning that. No, I learned that. Oh, I'm dog. learning that firsthand, brother. No, that, these niggas can't take criticism. I'm learning that firsthand, yo, bro. I, yo, I, I feel like that when I tell people stuff, too, it's hard for them to deal with, and we got to be receptive. I, I, I try to key on myself and say you got to be receptive to criticism because I tell niggas how the fuck I feel. I'm not even going to cap. Right. So I, oh, I leave an open door. Yo, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me what I'm doing wrong or whatever. That's rare. These two guys that I can argue and fight with and curse them out and they tell me I'm stupid, he's screaming and yelling, I can come back with them the next day because I know Yeah. and they know yeah. I got their best interest in mind and vice versa. Yeah. But if we can't take criticism, this is regular black people shit. Yeah. Like, like this shit to me is bigger then a lot of the things that we glorify that say, oh, well, we got to watch out for the rappers. We got to watch out for this. Because if these niggas can't take criticism or guidance, they don't want to listen to a fucking thing. How are we going to penetrate this shit if, be, if we're not speaking their language? Because we're not speaking their language. Mm. You know why people fuck with me? Because they know I know a lot of gangsters. Mm. And, I, and, and, and that's and, it. And, and they fuck with me. And I'm the one saying... I don't fuck with that gangster shit though. Mm. And everybody knows it. Mm. I'm not hiding it. Mm. So, but it's not a lot of me's. It's not a lot of you's that came from the government. It's not a lot of Hans that, that, that have, have knowledgeable that's from Brooklyn that then walk the streets and know what's up. So how do we penetrate motherfuckers if they don't want to be criticized? Yeah. We gotta have difficult conversations, brother. Difficult conversations is how you solve difficult problems. Communication leads to unification. The worst thing we could do is not talk and just have it to in hip hop. This is what they try to do. And so in hip hop, they be like, bet D1 or oh, you in that type of lane will only affiliate with people in your lane. Go talk to Kendrick or something. Go talk to Lupe Fiasco. Yep. Don't leave us alone over here. You know? <laughs> That's what they do. That's facts. That's you facts. right? We all over here. That's facts. That is the enemy of progress, brother. At the end of the day, we all brothers. Segregation. Come on, man. I got brothers who done did 20 years in prison. I got brothers that's in prison right now. I got students that done caught bodies and been murdered. Like, Forget that internal segregation, exactly. I'm from New Orleans where they try to be like, oh, you light-skinned, you not black, you Creole. Man, F that, man, I'm black, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, stop mm. trying to segregate us, man, with that colorism and all that stuff. So in hip-hop, that's what I'm trying to do is like, yo, we gotta communicate, man. And I got a lot of friendships with people who, the outside world might be like, huh, how that go? Cause we see how D1 coming, how he cool with Kevin Gates? How D1 on FaceTime with Kodak Black? Mm -hmm. How D1 talking to Boosie? How D1 got music with the game? How D1 cool with Starlito or Juvenile or Manny Fresh? And it's because, bro, before being a rapper, dog, I'm just... A person. I'm a person, bro. But you have certain... People have certain magnetic traits and you just happen to have it. 
Word. You know, whether before you were a rapper, as a teacher, I'm pretty sure other teachers are like, how do you get through to these students? There you go. Oh, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. They learn better. You probably had a higher um, grade level rate of your students. They're like, yeah. more of your students get A's than everybody else. Yeah. It's just, you're just one of those special individuals. Because when I seen you go off, I'm like, this other dude's doing what he's trying to do. It never connected. Mm. Mm. That's just real shit. And I could really rap. That's the other thing, brother. I rap better than 95% of the people on this earth, You were fly talking, nigga. That's the <laughs> He's not... a unification of the manifestation. I said, I said the rapper shit comes out. Rapping, if you can't, you can't stop him. It's always going to be fun. Also, I want to talk about, you said um, coming together. Years ago, and that's what we'll understand this, they said a jump shooting team can't win the NBA championship until Steph Curry proved that wrong. Now, what I see when people are arguing, it ain't because we can't get along. Everybody has a way they want to win. Mm. And it conflicts. SO is straightforward. He wants to rock. Me, I'm very methodical and persistent. I don't care if it takes longer. And now, that's the conflict. Not to cut you off. Yes. You calling it a conflict, to me, that's what makes this magical. Yeah. That's what makes a fire partnership. No, but what it, happened is we understand that about each other okay. and we merge it. Right. It took a long time. It took time. a long time. It was a lot of bullshit arguments, hanging up the phone. Yeah. We had to have talks with each other. Like, even if we argue, we're still going to show up for work on time. Yeah. Okay. And we're not going to bring... People would never know. We're not going to bring this shit between us to the camera. We, we've had guests and been like, fuck you! Yeah. And you're a fucking of the asshole! And ghosts be like, it's time to start. We'd be like, okay. Uh, bad people and the guests is looking at us like... Is, is everything okay? We're like, yeah, we, we, we still going to do our job because our job is fueling young minds to get to the bag. Okay. Yeah. So, so the we're way, not going to yeah. stop doing that because we got friction between yeah. us. The way you want to win for some other people, they're like, that ain't my vibe to win. And I just feel like, how are we going to unify multiple thought process of winning? When y'all, I just made this up, brother. Woo, when, let's when, go. When y'all say y'all fueling young minds to get to the bag, mm -hmm. I feel like bag need to stand for building a generation. You heard me? Because if getting to the bag... You can rap, nigga. Oh, oh I can definitely rap. <laughs> he if, caught that quick. If you not up on my music, you sleep. Dog. I'm sleeping. You need to definitely wake up. I'm yeah. sleeping. We gonna talk about your music. I just music, put man. my 11th album out. Heck yeah. Congratulations. Look, Thank you. At the end of the day, if we sitting there, mm -hmm. if life is about getting to this, bro, a green piece of paper, bro, if this is what our whole life is about, it's like, this is... Dang, dog. This is not the best use of our limited time here on Earth. A green piece of paper, bro. Watch this. You hurting niggas' hearts right now. Watch this, brother. They need to see this, though. And that wasn't no $1 bill. I don't know if the camera could catch it. No, it's on camera. Oh, okay. I don't know if they could catch it. All of a sudden now, this green piece of paper is worth nothing. It ain't worth nothing no more. You ain't finna tell me I'm finna spend my whole life down here simply just chasing after this when this could be torn up or burned and all of a sudden it ain't even got no value. It got to be something deeper and greater to life than just chasing after this bag, man. That's why if we talking about building a generation, if we talking about chasing after our God-given purpose, oh, well, sign me up for that. The bag is important, but the bag is not the top of the food chain. There's I'm a sorry, Haitian man. in Brooklyn that's gonna get some scotch tape and put that together. Well, let's give it to him, man. Right, and I'm Haitian. I let's can give say it to him. that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, big one back for you. Give it to him, man. <laughs> that's the Brooklyn man, boy. They can't, he can't help it. Yo, See, they go down. Yo, he yeah. Haitian. That's, he, that's his. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He ain't taking it. He throws it away. Nah. Yo, question. After all that other stuff, something like that, how did you get? To um, to the college curriculum situation. Yeah, to where I'm, I'm a college professor. Yeah, that's yeah. Dope. So I, I teach at and I, 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 Ivy League college. And yes, all. sir. Let's yeah. go. So I'm a fellow at Harvard University. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm also a professor at Tufts University. They in the same city. So mm. I go Harvard and I go Tufts. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, I designed a course called the uh, the intersection of hip hop and social change. And thankfully, people been seeing my track record over the years, and they're like, yo. This dude is really living that hip hop life, dropping albums, going on tour, millions and millions of streams, doing his thing. But really walking this walk of being an educator, was a middle school teacher in the beginning and is always doing speaking engagements and speaking on panels and talking about how we could be better. So 
Now, hip hop has gotten so big because of its influence, we're mm -hmm. talking about influence, that you got Ivy League schools that are like, man, we need some of that hip hop energy over here, you know what I mean? And they're looking for people who are down to take hip hop and be able to talk about it in, in a manner to where we break down the type of impact it's able to have, we're able to break it down. My brother Lupe Fiasco is teaching at MIT. I'm at Tufts University and at Harvard. You got Bun B who was teaching at Rice University in Houston. Um, I feel like we got other Ninth Wonder uh, teaching at Duke University. We to that point, fellas. Like we to that point. You know I what mean, I mean? I mean, you think you gotta have a name because I was trying to do that, and they and they not letting me in the door to do that type of thing. So it's not an not easy, right it's now, not, but it's not like it's something that like, anybody could do. This is what I'm saying. You, that's a great point, brother. That is a great point. I tried. You said, do you think you have to have a name? Uh, matter of fact, out here in New York, Rock Nation got a whole- I try, I, this is- Guru, I, I you, to, you know Guru? I, yeah, of I course. I know Guru, of yeah. Of course, of course, of course. It, like with anything in life, it's still politics, mm -hmm. you heard me? Politics mm -hmm. as usual. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That, I, and I, I just wanted you to say that, because that's the point. It's not, it's not an easy thing, and us black people, we gotta learn, it's politics behind everything. Everything. And we hate that. Yeah, that's yeah. the biggest thing that we hate. Oh, I should be on top, because I'm better. You don't know him. Mm. He's the key. He has the budget, and he wants to give it to him. Mm. So if you want to get into the politics, you need to start rocking with him. Mm. So you can come in the door. You might have to make less money. Mm -hmm. You might have to deal with some bullshit from time to time because you're only going to get his scraps from when he don't come in. Yeah. But when you get your opportunity, yeah. you got to use it to shine. We, we don't fuck with the politics, bro. We think the politics is, it make you soft. Say, bro. I started, there you go. Crazy. I, I, do. Start, I started playing the politics game way back when I was in college. I had, I had just started rapping, you heard me? Just started rapping. And I got an internship up here in New York. I interned with Jimmy Henchman, right? So I was working with Jimmy um, as a college student. Ironically, it's possible for working with Jimmy. That's yeah. <laughs> but Jimmy was my man. Shout Let's not get it from the Jimmy KK. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know the family. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I know the um, family. With that being said, I saw how many demos, it was CDs at that time, I saw how many demos was getting sent to the office, you heard me? And I was an intern, so they was like, D, go listen to all them demos, yeah. tell us if anything stand out, you know? So I'm in there all day listening to CDs, and I'm just like, yo, they got some people that's spitting on these CDs, but if you gotta connect with Jimmy or, or somebody Jimmy grew up with is, mm -hmm. is, is, is your manager, you getting an invite to walk straight into the office yes. and get an in-person meeting. You ain't got to submit no demo at that point. And I was like, ooh, it's about who you know. It's about the politics, you know what I'm saying? And so I started, I tried, bro. I tried to do the politics game. I went back to Louisiana. I interned at the radio station. Not because I'm trying to be a DJ or nothing like that, because I wanted to get cool with the DJs so they could play, play my, my music. record. You feel me? <laughs> so I did that. Shout out to Max 94.1 in Baton Rouge. I interned over there with uh, uh, DJ Super Mike and, and uh, uh, my man Jay Tweezy, right? Mm. Then, in New Orleans, coming up, I was like, it's all about having a cosign. So who the biggest artist to ever come from New Orleans? Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. So I'm like, man, if I can get a Lil Wayne cosign, I'm in there, you know what I'm saying? So I was, all, I was almost there. Baby called me, Slim calling me, YMCMB, they fly me out to Miami. I'm like, man, okay. The thing that didn't sit well with me is the whole time I'm meeting with Slim and I'm, and I'm meeting Baby and all this stuff, I never, like met Wayne this whole time. So I was confused, cause I'm like, if you over here in this camp, the Wayne cosign is what's really gonna take you to that next level. But what I didn't know at the time was, when they were kind of like getting beef interested thing. in me, they was, that was the beginning of, of the, the, beef. Of the, there you go. And it wasn't public yet. So nobody knew, but in my mind it was like, well, I met y'all. Y'all cool. I love kicking it with you, Slim and with nah, baby. I'm, I'm here to meet Wayne. I'm trying to meet Dwayne and Michael Carter. You know what I mean? Straight that up. makes sense. And it's not happening. So <laughs> that, that situation didn't feel right. So I actually, uh, I passed on the deal with them. I was like, nah, I'm good. You know what I mean? You know, I had a situation with them when I was younger from my artist, and they bounced my check, 550000 Bounced that motherfucker. Like a ball, boom, boom, boom. He gave up a situation with Dr. Dre. I gave up a situation with Dr. Dre. I didn't give it up. The cash money it came first. That. Okay. Then Dr. Dre came later. We were gonna sign with Dre, mm -hmm. but cash money was so big on the street. I said, let me go at least speak to baby mm -hmm. face to face and explain to him on some on some man to man shit why we're gonna sign with Dre. Okay. 
Dre and them took offense to that, that we left and didn't sign. Dre's the nigga like, I want to sign you. We're, we're, we're waking everybody up. They're coming to my house. They're going to the back room, and we're going to get this deal done in an hour. Don't, get, don't go see nobody Don't else. go nowhere. Mm. But I told Dre on, 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 on the creative because you know the game. Dre's not on the street with me, mm. and he's not sending no goons on the street. Mm. So you got to deal with the street shit mm -hmm. separately when you have an artist. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I just wanted to, I didn't want no problems. I was running around with a, a female. She was a singer. I ain't want no problems with these niggas. Thanks. I go back. Dre don't give us the deal. We stuck with cash money. They don't even know because I didn't even get a chance to tell them because Dre just stopped picking up the call. So I said, let me do the smart thing. We signed with cash money. The only people to get their money was a lawyer, $15,000 to do the deal. They bounced our check for $550,000, and that's how we wound up going with Sylvia Rohn. And the moral to the story was, my artist Yummy only wanted to sign with them because Lil Wayne was there. And this was back in 2004, mm. when Lil Wayne wasn't even that guy to the, the world yet. Wayne, and I'm yeah, looking at her because she's creative. Why the fuck you want to... Why is Lil Wayne such a big fucking deal is what I was saying. <laughs> look at this. Why are we signing with Wayne? Yo, you don't understand. Creatively, I'm getting chills, come on. Look at my shit. I see. I was like, I was just, she was like, creatively, you don't understand. Wayne's, the, Wayne's he's going to be that guy. We need to be with him while he's becoming that guy. Mm. Wow. And they bounced that check, bro. Wow. I know young. I met Merlin Bob before. stopped fucking with them. Merlin Bob was on a round table. Merlin Bob, so y'all know he's a big, he's a big record, he's legendary. Mm -hmm. Merlin Bob brought us in, and he was part of a round table situation. Because of the situation, Merlin Bob left the whole he situation, won. bro. Is, are there particular guidelines in your life that you have to adhere by to be a professor? Because we're seeing teachers get fired because they have OnlyFans pages. Mothers are, their kids are getting taken out of school because they have OnlyFans. Is there, are, you shouldn't be a teacher with an OnlyFans page, brother. I'm sorry. What if they doing something positive? What if they what just they showing their feet? Positive on what if they just showing their feet? Out, man. What if they just showing their feet? What if they just showing their feet? What if The whole thing was started for a rapper to be able to perform and they fans could get a look at them. It was started for musicians. People just lost it because the porn people just took it over. <laughs> but it was started so you could come here, we could put a camera on you, and you could do a private performance and post that shit up. Mm. And people could see what D1 is oh, doing. Oh, that's what OnlyFans was that's what yes. it was supposed It was supposed to be only <laughs> for your fans. Yes. Yes. Hey, brother, I ain't got too much pride <laughs> but, to say but, but I stand what you correct. Said, but, but, I stand why correct. do you say that a teacher can't have it? Well, no, Let's, okay. Because it's used for sex well, now. A Let's teacher talk. shouldn't be uh, filming flicks and, and all just busting it open, you heard me, showing booty and vagina on, on OnlyFans and, and, and breasts. Like, that just shouldn't... And and be somebody's elementary school teacher by name. Nah, a but leader. Why? But in why? The what what but, is the conflict? But why? Um, I don't think you're wrong. I just the same way I don't feel like our president should be uh, uh, able to just freely talk about yeah we're gonna grab them women by the pussy and and just be able to be out here leading the insurrection you know uh, at the White House because they don't want to leave office because they salty that that they lost mm -hmm. got defeated. You heard me. And they salty. I don't think that's right either. I think that leadership requires a certain uh, a certain amount of class. Mm. You have to have a certain amount of class as a leader because as a leader, it's not always about what you do, but it's about the aesthetic that you give off. It's about the aura that you exude. People won't always hear your words as a leader, but they'll they'll just observe you from afar or they'll see a a, a little soundbite. Of you, and they'll be like, "Yeah, that's the person that's representing us." You know, I didn't, uh, I didn't get to know my teachers like in depth when I was in school. But if they had something like that that got out about them, it would just make me automatically judge them. Oh, great example! One of my teachers in high school, I won't say her name, but she used to pack that iron. You heard me, and she used to bring it to school with her and have it in her in her purse. Right? One day she got up, went to the bathroom. Uh, we was being mischievous. Somebody went in her purse, you heard mm -hmm. me? And it didn't take it, but saw that she had that thing, you heard me? Saw that she had a gun. At that point, everybody just didn't take her serious as a teacher no more. It's just, <laughs> yo, well, we got a gangster for an English teacher, you heard <laughs> me? And it's just like, it's just joke after joke after joke. And we can't even like, we not trying to learn English at this point. We just trying to... We almost trying to bait you to get you to I mean, like, hey, excuse me, Miss Such and Such. Uh, you got any Kleenex in your purse that I could use? Um, can you open your purse yeah, and let me know? Like my nose shit. is running. Yeah. Like, my school a little bit. 
Yeah. Another teacher liked another teacher. We see it. Whenever you see two teachers that like you. Uh-huh. We saw we did that. They mess messed the whole thing. Oh, so you ain't a mean the teacher no more. Like, oh, you like her. So you. Hey, I'm a, it, I'm a, it's true. It's hey, I'm going to tell y'all something. Some, I really, you know, bro, I, this was high school. So there's a difference between narration and glorification. I'm not glorifying this. I'm Just narrating telling your my story. Past. I'm narrating on, my pimp. past. All right. You ain't, I know you recognize that hair properly. I'm, Come uh, on, man. Can you shut up, brother? Can you please shut up? Shut up, man. Take listen. it from a man who can't grow it back. I, I'm showing you respect, but listen, let me finish brother. narration. So, so, so in, so this is when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Me. Me and my girl at the time in high school, this was before my basketball game. Um, we had a home game. The game ain't start till like 7 p.m. So I'm like, shoot, we get out of school at 3. What's good? You know what I'm saying? Like, we got, we got some time to do some things. Mm -hmm. So as I'm saying this, um, we go to like this secluded, uh, and I shouldn't have been doing this. Once again, I shouldn't have been doing none of this, yo. But we go to this secluded area of the school, and when we go there, we like, oh, ain't nobody going to be there. And when we go there... We found two of our teachers beat us to the beat us to the spot. You heard me? Uh -huh. They're already there. The only issue is one of the teachers was married to another teacher at oh, the school. Oh man. You heard me? So, so now means... at this point, oh man, we got the tea. You heard me? We got the tea, we got the dirt, we got the scoop. <laughs> so at this point, brother, we can't take None of this serious for the rest of the year. Yeah, like y'all, like y'all, y'all supposed to be out here, man. It's a joke. Did man. you sitting here? Did you weaponize that they get good grades? Well, I didn't. In, in all honesty, but she did. Yeah, I didn't do it, <laughs> and I'm not. You know why? I didn't. But I can't no, lie. But, but but what had happened was, yeah. I always remember when that OJ verdict came down. All our teachers brought the TVs to the class, right? And they were just ready. Yeah, I remember and, that. And, and when it was not guilty, I remember yeah. the football player ran down the hall and said, the juice is loose. <laughs> Our history teacher failed everybody. And if you was a... It was a, a white, white history teacher? Yeah, yes. And if you was like an A-plus a student, everyone got the minimum 65, which means you passed. He was so upset at our class. He failed everybody and passed everybody else with a 65. So I say that to say, if you got the advantage too, yeah. Use, I, it. My, yeah. Use it. Use yeah. it. Give me me. Let me give me. Yeah. Man. I don't think it's right, but I, I believe in equality. Yeah. So so to get back to the original point in all seriousness, I think that as leaders or as a teacher, yeah, like you got to, first of all, nobody is perfect. So of course it's not. one thing to have your vices. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. I'm messed up. I'm, I'm the same as anybody else on this earth. But it's different when you are choosing to publicly build a platform off of your, your stuff that you know and like, yo, at least keep that to yourself behind closed doors. But you're choosing to monetize that. My principal, when I was a middle school teacher, he just found out I was a rapper. Rap has such a negative connotation to it mm. that even without him hearing my music, he told me I had to pick. You mm -hmm. wanna be a teacher or you wanna be a rapper? Pick one or the other. Cause the, the, the students are all buzzing all of a sudden cause Mr. Augustine is apparently D1 and you're some kind of rapper. So you gotta pick one. Mm -hmm. He made me pick. I was like, sir, if you listen to my music, you will see that it got a message in it that's actually gonna help our students in the long run. I'm pouring life into them, you heard me? But it was just like, now nah, you gotta pick one. So but how was he able to do that to your career? That was behind closed doors that he had that convo with mm -hmm. me. So it that's was all- how. Yeah, that's how. It, one it on one, motherfucker. There you go. So nobody else. So even if you go out and somebody say something crazy, I don't know what the but fuck you're talking tenure, about. Tenure at that point? No, uh, you don't get tenure as a middle school teacher. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a middle school teacher, <laughs> dog. Like, hey, you get fired. You get yeah. let go. Like I was just a freaking middle school teacher, bro. <laughs> and to be real with you, um, he kind of had a little. Dang, God bless his soul, because he passed away. But he kind of had some leverage over me at the time too, mm -hmm. because. Although I was a teacher, see, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't an education major, so you got to have all these certifications and stuff. Mm. I wasn't fully certified at the time. Got you. He was like, look, you a young black man, and our school is in the middle of the trenches. These kids need to see somebody like you because you're going to connect with them. So he kind of made a position for me, right? Mm. Just knowing that, like, oh, we got a positive young black man. We need you in here. But then once he heard the rap part, it was like, oh. I made we, a mistake. I made a mistake. And I'm just like, dang, you really going to make me choose? And that's the day I chose, I'm going to be a rapper. And I thugged it out till the end of the year. I didn't want to quit on my students in the middle of the year. You heard me? I stuck with them. But after that, I'm going to go try this D1 stuff out. I didn't know if it was going to pop off or not. I had never made a dime off of being a rapper. 
never made a dime. But my faith in God, my commitment to mastering my craft and making a lane. There was no lane for what I do in New Orleans prior to me. How did you survive the violence in New Orleans? Because when you spoke about your teacher having the iron, people don't understand the violence in your town. It's always bad as fuck in New Orleans. People can hear the news, but it's different when you win it. Like how, like Rochdale, people that didn't know about Rochdale would be like, oh, it's cool. I'm like, no, bro, you got to be in it. It's different. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I think everybody know about places like New Orleans and the wards in Texas. Like, mm -hmm. like niggas know it go. It go. I, I feel like people know it gets down and dirty out there because they tell you, like, when you step off, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can feel it, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know not to go certain places. They move differently. They look differently. Mm-hmm. But how did you survive? Is back well, not get caught back, up. Get back to what he said. I never turned into a character, meaning trying to be somebody that I knew deep down I wasn't. Man, I ain't no killer, man. So since I ain't no killer, I ain't even going to have a gun. You know what I mean? Because if you get a toy, the temptation is eventually I want to play with that toy. Of course. So for me, I was like, that ain't my lane. I knew that at an early age. You know, I seen my daddy hop out the car and draw down on a dude who hit, hit our car from the side when I was like four years old. And I'd never forget that visual in my head of seeing my daddy do that. And that stuff made me, number one, scared of my daddy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to get on his bad side. But number two, I was like, man, I ain't, I'm not like that. Like, I ain't, I ain't got that in me. So since I ain't got that in me, I always just stayed in my lane. Because of the area I grew up in, it was all around me. But I was just like, I'm going to be the dude that they like, yo, let David, man, David cool people, man. Like, like. He ain't even trying to be somebody he's not. <laughs> that was me in my hood. Too. Yeah. Did, did, did you play sports? Of course I, I played. I played ball. I played basketball. Basketball. Too. <laughs> of course. That, that say, I tell you, sports saved my life. Sports and just girls. Like, mm -hmm. yo, he, he playing sports. He fuck with girls. He Leave ain't trying to harm nobody, bro. You go. And you know what it did? It made the real gangsters respect me more. Yeah, but they don't do that now. They killing the ball players and shit now. Like, they don't have the same respect for... The younger dudes, like they have for us, like you, you had a certain basketball b book bag. Yep. If you wore, you wanted to get your. I'm seeing him getting chills in my. You wanted to Me get too, the varsity brother. jacket. Me too, brother. Because when you got on that train and niggas would be like, you got your sneakers. They like. We ain't gonna fuck with him because he not about that life. Yep. But it's 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 so different right now that they beating up seventy five year old men and they twenty five years old. So yeah. it's like. Where, where, when did this, how did this start to occur? Because they, there you go. they didn't get no level of accountability. See, when hold on, hold on. You started sound like D1 now. Yeah. <laughs> accountability. Yeah. We need leadership. But, but, we need, come but, on, but, man. But revenge. People, people haven't taken revenge for shit happening. So when there's repercussions, you think differently. When these little kids was knocking out the grandmothers, if they knew a 40-year-old man was going to come and break their nose, they ain't doing that. They ain't doing that. Mm -hmm. Just on some, no, oh, but he's a little kid. He hit an elderly woman. But the little kid got a switch now. That's, that's a difference. That's true. So the 40-year-old man is a little worried to run down. That's because true. Because the kid got a switch now. And he's not respecting he your authority. Retaliation. Then he's not, oh, you ran down on me. Oh, so what? I beat, I beat the yeah. lady up. Yeah. That ain't none of your business, old man. So you know what I'm saying? So now I'm pulling this switch out, and I'll beat her up, and I'm going to spark you, too. And they're going to do it. So where we going? Like, it's, I, I, the, 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 the gun shit is outrageous to me right now. Mm. We, it, it then gone back. Mm. Like, niggas up here not even scared of the time. Remember when you just get caught with a gun? Oh, you got to do three to just five years. Just the bullets years. alone. If you get caught with a gun here, you have to do three and a half to five years no matter what. That's why Lil Wayne went to jail. Yeah. Got caught with that thing mm -hmm. out here. That's why Ja Rule went to jail. Yes. Got caught. I was a little kid when all this was happening. But they not, but, but it don't scare them no the, more. Oh, that's they, uh, they, mm -mm. they taking the three and a half. Yeah, like, easy. I'm holding this, I'm holding this heat, and I don't care if I get caught with it. So I feel like that is why we need rappers, because all these kids listen to rap music. So that's why we need the rappers who are the generation older than them to set an example. And I know that for the rappers, it could be difficult if it's like, dang, for the last 20 years, I done made a brand and a name and got paid off of being about that life. So it's kind of difficult for me to turn into... Mr. Rogers all of a sudden, or be the dude that's, that's saying, hey, don't do that. But at the end of the day, man, we all got to evolve at some point, bro. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to get people to, to be like, you know who the realest OG who 
I just love him, brother. I wish I had time. I got to leave uh, town later tonight. Styles P. I thought, yeah, we oh, had yeah. Styles on. Oh, no, I know. That's when I found out about y'all's oh, okay, show. Okay, yeah. I reposted. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, saw it, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. Talking about the um, accountability in hip hop and all uh -huh. that. Styles P. And he brother, lived that life. Like Styles, said. bro, I love you, bro, with a passion, bro, because he lived that life. I, I don't know. I ain't grow up with him. But everybody I meet say he lived that life. Uh. But now, Styles is the main dude that's saying, brother, if you 35 and older and you still glorifying the streets and all that, stay as far away from me as possible. You but know what I'm saying? Can I ask you a real question? Though? What's up? The younger generation, I'm not talking about the younger generation rapper, I'm talking about kid. They're not listening to the OG rapper, right? The younger generation kid is listening to the younger generation rapper. Mm -hmm. The younger generation rapper is still in the street. Mm -hmm. So isn't there the disconnect? Nor are they listening to the, so the, all right. It's so a the, great point. Okay, mm -hmm. so the young generation rapper has the influence mm -hmm. and they're not listening to the older generation rapper and they're the ones that's influencing the kids. So right. how we going, so how how we blaming the, old, the old, older rapper? That was a great formula. I disagree with one point. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. The younger generation rapper is listening to slash influenced by the older generation rapper, in my opinion. You think? For every NBA young boy, there's a Lil Boosie who he looked up to. For every NBA young boy or, or, or um, yeah, NBA young boy, there's a Lil Wayne that he listened to and looked up to, right? For every Kodak Black, there's a Rick Ross that he looked up to. There's always people who, at some point before you became the dude, you were just a fan as a kid listening to these artists when they were younger. I agree with so you. So I do that. still feel like, absolutely, for every Dave East, there's a Cameron. There's all there's a Jim Jones. There's all the people in Harlem who Dave East clearly looked up to. You know what I'm saying? And he shows reverence for them. He'll do a whole tape with a Styles P or with this artist or with a Vado or something like that. You know what I mean? Like that. So that's the part where I do feel like. But, but your, to your point, it's a sweet spot. You see who you named in the ages. It has to be a particular artist, and it has to resonate within that time. Because every artist, what you're saying now, Esso, can't do it. It would only have to be a particular set. Because when we was at the office with 50, I saw the young dude say, you my, you my guy. And they sat there and listened to him. Hey, but that could only be 50. Could another dude that came out of Queens do that? And 50 is known for the thug shit. So And even though he's on the movie Mogul shit, he's still they're attracted to him because of the thug shit. But watch this. But when you get in the office with them white people and you about to cut a deal for their movies, you ain't bringing that gangster stuff in but there with they attracted yes, to him. Yes. They attracted to him for yes. the thug shit? You're, you're, you're not bringing guns in the office with you. D1. You, no, D1. Of course no, 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 no. But they attracted to him He's for with, the thug shit too. So, so you got to walk the walk there. And Fifth is great at walking the walk. Everybody off. likes gangsters, D1. Okay, yo, yo, bro. Is that the I problem? Mean, yo, D1. Well, other cultures like gangsters, but they know and we not finna go do none of that gangster but stuff. But our culture, nigga, I come home and I graduate from school. We said this shit. I come home, I graduate from school. Everybody in the hood, congratulations. Nobody was graduating from college with two degrees and five and a half years. Nobody was doing this shit. The gangster come home from doing a four-year bid. Niggas is like, I got everything for you. <laughs> yo, the, yo I, the world is yours, yeah. homeboy. Yeah, that's powerful. The that's world powerful. is yours, so why would that's they powerful. not want to be in They got the stimulus package. Car. Money, wow. girls, every drug, every girl, every girl wants ghosts. Now the 50 that created this ghost fucking character. Now every bitch wants a gangster drug dealer that goes who's gonna murder years. niggas, who wears suits, so, who can fuck bitches. So Phil, who, <laughs> who, who's sentimental and go to museums. Right. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it, man. Y'all spitting, spitting right now. Y'all, <laughs> Hey, man, leave me alone. Leave me out of here, man. Y'all spitting right now. Y'all are spitting. And so, we just working this out in real time. So if we really want change, then people like Fifth need to do better. That's all. Like, because Fifth, the culture loves you. We love you. Like, all of that stuff. But I identify, when I was a middle, bro, my first big song was called J50 and Wheezy. It's a song where I was actually, like, calling them out and saying, brothers, Y'all running the rap game. This is 2010 we talking about. Y'all running the rap game. I see how much my students are influenced by y'all. Y'all not having to live that life no more. Why are you still perpetuating it and glorifying it? And I don't think 50 years. I think he's not living that life no more. His aura. His aura. But, but no. he's not even perpetuating it. He don't it. do it no more. It. You don't hear him 
popping shit, threatening motherfuckers. You're he, right. He's on his movie shit. So he. So I'm not he, gang gang. I do not gang bang. He <laughs> promotes working hard. We yeah. know he's a hard fucking worker. Mm -hmm. But it's his aura, like you say, like a leader. You said he might, you might not listen to what the fuck he got to say, mm. right? So he could be spitting some positive. Yo, everybody, every clip that you see is, mm. is about working and staying mm. consistent and mm. every everything people posting. But his aura, mm. let me show you some good Yeah, y'all making some good points. Let, let me say this All because right. this is a y'all making good points. I'm about to make a great point. Okay, you know, watch this. Sometimes what we need is for people to denounce what they previously used to glorify. So if you used to glorify something and you was definitely about that life and perpetuating that, and now you're just like, well, I ain't glorifying it no more. I'm just kind of playing the neutral role. You got the glorification seat, mm -hmm. you got the neutral seat, and you got the D1 the seat. seat. The, 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 <laughs> you got the D1 seat. I'll take that, dog. I will take that, you heard me? I'll take that, brother. I'll take that, dog. I'll take that. That's you weird. got the D1 seat, you got the watch D1 this. Seat. Cause what the D1 seat does is say, hey, brother, Let's, let's come out publicly and say that that seat is wrong. The glorification seat is wrong. Because it hit different when it's just like, I ain't speaking on what's going on over there. I ain't talking bad about it, but I ain't talking good about it. I'm in the neutral seat. I'm just getting but, my but, bag, and I'm just, and I'm just making one, movies, da-da-da. When kids 20 and under, when they see Fifth, you know what the first thing they say? That's the dude on TV. He's the movie star. Mm -hmm. All the times I've seen him with the young kids, they never said that's Get Rich or Die Trying. It's like, that's the movie star. And when he did the song with 6 9 he's like, I am not gang gang. I do not gang bang. He's like, I don't do none of that. I'm a civilian. I make movies. Now, people don't believe it. Now, what 6 9 was talking about on that song, though? Oh, all the ignorant shit. Exactly. So we also got to be careful. Listen, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be on y'all's show right now if it was something to where I knew that y'all was trying to, because they definitely got podcasters nowadays who, like, they're they're literally trying to start some some beef or 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 we spoke about that. Yeah, like like I hate that shit. Like they're trying to, brother. Like I literally, I ain't gonna say nobody's name right now. Let me stop. But you be calling everybody else's name, man. Yeah, cool. I, Yo, you and can't. And y'all got a problem with it. No, no, you and can't call my niggas' it. names out. You will call somebody niggas' names out. You ain't gonna call no, no, other no, niggas' names out. Y'all have a problem. Apparently, I ain't got no problem with when, it. When I called, when I called rappers' names, the first thing you sat here and told me was D one. You gotta understand, brother. You can't be calling <laughs> people's names out. That's real shit. You stop calling names after the show. Got you. Got you. Let's stop calling names after the show. So, so what I'm saying is that that's what y'all trying to do. That's real shit. I see that and and. And this ain't no diss to nobody, but it's almost like we got to get to the point to where we, like, I know that if I'm going to get somebody on my song, if I don't set no ground rules for that song, they could come on there talking about whatever they want. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, that song still says D1 featuring that person. So now whatever they chose to come on there and talk about, now I'm implicated into that. That's the thing, bro. So... You saying, oh, all right, he got on a song with 6 9 and said, I am not gang gang, I do not gang bang. That's cool. But if you're on a song where gang banging and killing is being glorified by the other artists on the song, then it's like, dang, it don't seem like you're opposed to it either. And that's the difficult part. I know I'm asking a lot, brother, but leadership is lonely. You put a lot of pressure on the rap. You making the rap, they got to rap. They got to enslave themselves with the label. They got to tour. They got to take care of their family. And, 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 same time. <laughs> and they got to save the community at the same time. Y'all hear this dude, man. I'm just asking. First of all, first of all mm. we need to stop enslaving ourselves with the labels because the industry, I teach about this in my college course, you heard me? Mm -hmm. It's a three-part ecosystem. You got creators, consumers, and commissioners, right? You don't have an industry without creators and consumers. So you can have labels all you want, but a label plus rappers, that's not an industry. You need fans. A label plus fans, that's not an industry. You still need rappers. The only two things that can exist without the third is creators and consumers. Mm. Long as we got rappers and we got fans, we don't actually need labels. But what happens is the labels come in and they prey on us because they see that that little dude in the Bronx, oh man, he going viral on TikTok, I bet. Look like he from the trenches. He probably ain't got no money. Let's offer him six figures for an advance. He ain't never seen this type of money in his life. And we're going to incentivize him to keep making drill music. Keep making that murder music. You know what I'm saying? We're going to put this bag in your pocket and we want you to make 20 of them songs. And that's what we're going to put that on your album. 
That's what the labels come in and do. So what we got to do, like you said, we got to enslave ourselves to the labels. I think we got to get strong enough. I know we got to get strong enough as artists and as fans to where we say, what do we really want for our community? If we want our communities to get better, then we need to find a way to talk about what's going on in the community without glorifying what's going on in the community. Mm -hmm. Real, we, you mean go back to real creativity? That part, and that's asking a lot, huh? That's that, asking nigga, a lot. You have but we got to. But you, know, but you know what it takes to have real creativity? It hmm. still takes money, it takes time, and collaboration. I thought and, creativity was free, Laz. I no, checked. no, I know, no, brother. but the collaboration, when I say, mm. in order to create, right, Creators' minds. Most people need a place, a clear mind. People creating out of at, 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 at adversity mm -hmm. do it at home, and they usually get somebody like a producer or somebody to come and bring them out of it. Then that producer needs to have studio time, a safe place for them to go, something for them to eat. I'm not talking about thousands of thousands. I'm just talking about being able to. Actually, the ability. Yeah. the ability for you to Man, do I didn't know thing. I had a mic on this whole time, yeah, brother. I, 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 I text him to make sure that, that it, it wasn't covered. It's Are fine. we good? No, it's you fine. Good. Yeah. Bro, who put this on me? He did. You did. <laughs> you did? That's how smooth we work. Bro, y'all different in New York, bro. Like, <laughs> that dude, man. Because I, I text him, I said his mic is covered, but he's like, it's all right. You I'm straight? You good. Man, that's crazy. All right, anyway, I just got spooked just now. I'm like, man, I done stole somebody's microphone from another yeah, city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, so so uh, it takes time and money to be yeah. creative. I feel like collaboration is right now is really what's missing the from the music business because they because they collaborate now. Well, I did this verse and I'm a, and I'm gonna send it to you. Yeah, but so we used to come together. Yeah, Let's yeah. Take your point. I think the collaboration is needed for everything yeah. beyond music, money, business, clothing, everything. Mm. Even if you're not into that world, if you're a stockbroker and my man who has this store, collaborations like that Killer Mike Bank. Yep. Right, like I like like, but I feel like our black people like I needed to be made simpler for me. Like mm. like like that's what black people need. They need to be able to go to Killer Mike's bank. That's what black people do. You got to go online. You got to send your money to somebody. You can't see it. They have the upper hand on us. Like, yes. Convenient. Black black, black people, people make shit inconvenient. Yeah, we don't have convenience. <laughs> wow. Hey, but Think but about the, how we but do we have the money? Yeah. But do they? But but is it a plot? They, they, they might not give us what we need to make it convenient for our black people. That's right. you know what I'm saying. Right. We don't have the land. We don't have the real estate. They can pop out. When you do the Soho House, I, I just did a party at, at, at um, Dumbo House. No black people get to host parties. I hosted this shit. Shit was crazy, right? Thank you. Big deal, right? We don't have that. Black people don't have a chance to even get that. I got that from another guy who knew another guy and had faith to let me do it. Now, if black people wanted to even build a Dumbo house, Dumbo house and Soho house own their land. They don't own, own, own the Dumbo one, but every other Soho house, they own the buildings. Mm. They have the cheat code because it's like, okay, I own the building, so I'm gonna put this Dumbo house here, right? And I'm gonna charge all y'all $1,500 every four months you know what? to come in here. Let's every nigga to walk in there person has to have a $5,000 membership and a card, right? So you're paying, I own the building, you're paying to come in here, and although you pay me $5,000, you gotta go get drinks at the bar, you gotta go pay for food, you only giving me this shit so you can come in my door and be exclusive, bro. Let's go back to what D1 said, right? We don't have access. So, think about what we willing to pay just to feel cool. I'm just marinating That's what I'm on saying. it. But the price we willing to pay just to feel cool. But I'm gonna bro. piggyback what you said earlier about understanding the knowledge, right? In the black community, dudes will learn how to sell drugs. Mm -hmm. They'll learn the whole ins and outs. They don't care about math class. But and all drugs. Don't just say drug, coke, dope, yeah. weed. They got to learn the measurements, Heron. how to pack yeah. it. Heron. Yeah, yeah. Heron, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Dudes will learn all the rapper's discography, mm -hmm. all of that. Du dudes will learn stats of players, understand mm -hmm. percentages. All that brain power. We can do the cool shit of learning how to get this land. The mm. same tenacity. It's not cool to us. Yo, we don't have the, we don't even have the knowledge of good credit, right? I, I, but it's not to cool. get the stuff that we need. Think that, about how that, did that, you get that, into that, the drug game? That, that's that, that's the point. So we talking about rappers a lot. The fans nowadays are just as toxic as the rappers because the fans Ooh. want the ignorance. Of course, the fans are addicted to it, All brother. Day. Listen, brother, you want to know the most toxic place in hip hop? It ain't New Orleans, it ain't the Bronx, it ain't Queens. It's the comment section on Instagram. <laughs>
Yo, yo, you yo, was, yo, 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 part two. Yo, yo, like, subscribe, super thanks. Oh, were we done? Yeah, yeah. we did. How we, we going to end we, on we, that? We, oh, we, we, we killed it with we that. That's the oh, perfect right. we, We're definitely, yeah. like, real talk. Whenever we see this man again, we coming right back here, and we got to do part two. Open door. I didn't door. Even know that this was going to be this fire. Like, yeah. that I ain't going to Now, cap. thank you. This but that was the perfect way to end it. You know what I'm saying? No. Please tell them how they can find you. Definitely, on man. The ground. Tap in with me on all social media platforms at D1 Music. You heard me? D E E, the number one music. And on all streaming platforms, D1, D E E dash, the number one. You heard me? I ain't got much more to say. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Do Superstar stream his music. Next time we have him on, he's going to teach y'all how to make money yeah. off y'all music so yeah, you don't absolutely. have to enslave yourself with the label. Bag fuel, ring that bell, subscribe.